much for joining us for this interview, which is sponsored by the Jean Monnet Chair in Trade and Environmental Conflict. We have the great opportunity today to have a special guest, Professor Nicolas de Sadovir. He is a professor in European Law and Environmental Law at the St. Louis University and the Catholic University of Louvain. Professor, good morning. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, in the course of this interview, we should focus on the application of state aids regimes on environmental measures. A variety of European instruments encourage member states to consider European and um, environmental innovation. And now, state aids in the environmental domain start to constitute one of the spearheads of national environmental protection policies and the fight against global warming. Now, containing both positive being subsidies and negative, uh, negative being tax relief, tax remission uh, guarantees, um, state aids may come in extremely different forms. Um, now, what explains the success of state aids in this field? As we already discussed in earlier interviews, at the outset, the environmental policy uh, aimed at limiting, at reducing the level of environmental mm -hmm. harm in placing a number of regulatory obligations upon the undertakings. Needless to say, uh, these environmental obligations entail extremely important costs for the companies. So, in the course of the 1970s, both the OECD and the European Commission realized the need for the state authorities to support financially mm -hmm. the undertakings, and in particular the ones uh, aiming at implementing higher standards than the domestic ones. Uh, so, uh, there has been, uh, since uh, the end of the 1970s, uh, a need uh, for offering financial support to undertakings and that needs uh, has become uh, even more obvious today in connection uh, to the fight against climate change. Okay, thank you. Um, now, reading Article 107 uh, from the TFEU, I suppose a number of conditions must be fulfilled. Um, Professor, could you please clarify and maybe give a definition of what uh, state aid is? Well, in virtue of Article 107, uh, a state aid can be defined as any aid granted by a member state or through state support in any form whatsoever which distort or threatens to distort competition by favouring certain products or certain production. And such an aid shall deem to be incompatible with the internal market in as much as its impact upon trade between the member states. Accordingly, the Court of Justice of the European Union has been setting out four cumulative conditions. Firstly, the state intervention must create an advantage that's conferred upon the recipient undertaking. Secondly, that intervention uh, must be imputable uh, to the state authorities or must be carried out through state resources. Thirdly, the aid must be selective in nature. Fourthly, the uh, intervention uh, must be liable to affect trade between member states. So indeed, these four conditions need to be fulfilled in order to qualify the national measure as a state aid within the meaning of Article 107. Thank you. Um, now, if I may, let's address the first condition. Um, being an advantage conferred on the recipient. Um, now, I imagine the recipient of an advantage must be uh, an undertaking or a company. Indeed, the recipient of the aid must be an undertaking and not a private person. So, an undertaking has been defined as any entity engaged in economic activity, regardless of its legal status, regardless the ways in which uh, that undertaking has been financed. And uh, in addition, economic activities has been defined by the Court of Justice as any activity consisting in offering on the market, on the market goods or services. Whenever a legal entity carries out economic activities within the meaning of that definition, that 
entity shall be qualified within the meaning of Article 107 as an undertaking. Okay. Uh, now, I do imagine consumers are excluded. Yes, consumers are utterly excluded from the scope of ambit of Article 107. So whenever you shall purchase a green car or a green product uh, and you are um, getting a tax relief or tax remission on, the pur on that purchase, um, such an arrangement is falling out with the scope of ambit of Article 107. And what about NGOs that are given state aid? Well, recently the um, General Court of the European Union uh, had to decide uh, a case uh, in which uh, environmental uh, NGOs in Germany uh, benefited from a uh, transfer of 125,000 uh, hectares uh, of uh, natural uh, lands. So uh, these NGOs were carrying out for the um, sake of the state uh, authorities a number of missions regarding uh, nature protections. The general court took the view that it was possible to dissociate on the one hand the statutory mission that was conferred upon these nature conservation societies from the economic activities in the area of fishing, of hunting, and of ecotourism. And uh, as a result, uh, the NGOs were qualified as undertakings within the meaning of Article 107, and the transfer of these 125,000 uh, hectares of uh, habitats was deemed to be a state aid measure uh, for the purposes of Article 107. Now, I do imagine that the definition elaborated by the Court of Justice uh, of state aid is larger than that of a subsidy. Yes, indeed, it's much larger than that of the concept of a subsidy, on the account that on the one hand, uh, one is dealing with uh, positive benefits, mm -hmm. such as subsidies, loans, direct investment, and on the other hand, one is dealing with a number of negative measures. So any measures uh, that's likely to mitigate the charge uh, that are normally included in the undertaking's uh, budgets uh, are uh, considered as an advantage conferred upon the recipient. So uh, among these um, uh, negative measures, one can uh, mention uh, guarantees, uh, tax reliefs, uh, tax remissions, uh, preferential tariffs, um, the exceptions of paying a fine or the exceptions of uh, paying a preferential charges and so on and so forth. So accordingly, uh, any uh, form of for, uh, revenue foregone or any measures reducing under normal market circumstances, the financial burden uh, has to be qualified as an advantage uh, within the meaning of uh, Article 107. So by way of illustration, uh, whenever a public authority is selling a land at a price lower than the average market price, or whenever a public authority is managing uh, the waste uh, for uh, the sake of the uh, private undertaking, uh, they do confer upon the recipients an advantage. Okay, thank you. And does the polluter pays principle um, affect the concept of advantage uh, as far as environmental measures are concerned? Yeah, as we discussed uh, in uh, earlier discussions, the polluter pays principle is enshrined in Article 191, Paragraph 2 of the Treaty. So the uh, EU policies must be based upon that principle. And among these EU policy, one is likely to encounter state aid policy. Mm -hmm. So uh, the European Commission accordingly uh, does pay heed uh, to the polluter based principle in analyzing whether the domestic measure uh, can be qualified as an advantage for the purposes of Article 107. So whenever the state uh, intervention uh, is likely to reduce uh, the burden placed upon the company, mm 
uh, in terms of waste management uh, as a matter of uh, uh, soil uh, remediation, uh, such a measure confers upon the recipient an advantage. In that connection, GMO is a case in point. Uh, GMO is a case related to the uh, management of animal waste produced by slaughterhouses in France. So in the aftermath of the mad cow disease, the French authorities decide uh, to manage uh, the waste produced uh, in the French uh, slaughterhouses. The Court of Justice took the view in GMO that waste management was an inherent activity of the slaughterhouses. And given that um, waste orders were deemed to be responsible under EU secondary law mm -hmm. uh, as to the recovery or as to the disposal of the animal waste, uh, any state intervention in the area of animal waste management was deemed to be a measure conferring an advantage uh, upon the slaughterhouses. And um, does compensation for public services involved in environmental management um, be qualified, must it be qualified as, a, um, as an advantage? Well, uh, this is uh, extremely uh, important question. The undertakings do not uh, enjoy any real financial advantage where uh, the state measure amounts to the comp uh, as compensation to the public services uh, they provide. Um, however, in connection to the ATMA case law, firstly, the lawmaker has to provide for an obligation to discharge a public service. Secondly, uh, that obligation has to be carved out in the light of transparent and objective parameters. Thirdly, that compensation must be proportional to the amount of uh, the service provided by the recipient undertaking. Fourthly, uh, the compensation must be determined on the basis of an analysis of the real cost incurred by the recipient undertaking. So whenever these four conditions are fulfilled, mm -hmm. the compensation cannot be qualified as an advantage and one is escaping uh, the implementation of the state aid regimes in virtue of Article 107. Thank you. Um, well, I, I understand the broad scope of advantage. Uh, however, I'm reading, uh, when I'm reading the case law of Court of Justice, there is an advantage on the recipient company. Um, in as much there is an intervention by the member state or through um, state resources. What does this condition imply? Well, the Court of Justice has been interpreting the terms of Article uh, 107 as broadly as possible. So the, the idea uh, is not to cover exclusively uh, direct financial support, uh, but through the concept of true state resources, uh, the view of the Court of Justice is that Article 107 encompasses also a number of uh, indirect measures supporting financially uh, the recipient undertaking, such as uh, tax remissions or tax exemptions. So um, the, the, the concept of true state resources uh, allows allow the Court of Justice to uh, broaden uh, the scope of ambit of Article 107. And if I read the court's uh, case law right, does it mean that any regulatory intervention is likely to fulfill that second condition? No. Uh, of importance is to stress that the state measure is attributable uh, to the state authorities. Secondly, of importance is to demonstrate that the support has been granted directly or indirectly through state resources. Uh, um, accordingly, uh, measures that do not involve a transfer of resources from state authorities to the recipient uh, undertakings cannot be qualified uh, as an, uh, a state aid. So all financial means by which public authorities may support companies uh, 
no matter whether they are permanent state assets, are likely to be qualified as state aids in as much as uh, there is an indirect uh, financial support mm -hmm. granted to the recipient undertakings, you know. Would you mind giving an illustration? Uh, perhaps the, the feed-in uh, tariff schemes that were developed by the member states a number of years ago with a view to um, offsetting uh, the surcharges um, from the production of electricity from green resources are uh, a case in point. In uh, the German Prussian Electra case, the Court of Justice took the view that the obligation placed by the German lawmaker upon electric suppliers to purchase at fixed minimum price the electricity produced by windmills uh, did not involve, involve uh, directly or indirectly the transfer of state resources. Uh, so accordingly, uh, the uh, um, undertakings were not appointed by the German state authorities with a view to managing a state resources. However, in the uh, Essent network uh, case, uh, as well as in Association Vent de Colère, the Court of Justice uh, took the opposite view regarding two uh, others, uh, two other electricity scheme. Uh, the Court of Justice stressed that in these two cases there was indeed a transfer uh, of a compensation payment uh, to the producers uh, through a levy placed upon the consumers. And so given that the monies remain under the control of the French and the Dutch uh, state authorities, um, these schemes uh, had to be considered as a transfer of state resources uh, from state authorities uh, to the uh, recipient undertakings and uh, these schemes were falling within the scope of ambit of Article 107. What about advantages granted through a private or a public body appointed by state? Uh, yes, be it uh, the Caisse Nationale de Consignation and de Dépôt in France, or be it any uh, private uh, body um, who is involved in managing uh, state uh, financial resources uh, that's sufficient uh, to apply the state aid regime. Does the fact of not implementing uh, environmental law entail the granting of state aids? That is a very relevant question. Uh, in virtue of Article 197 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, the member states of the European Union are called on to implement effectively secondary law. N however, one has to face hard facts. Uh, the environment directives uh, appear as tiger papers uh, due to the fact uh, that State authorities are, are either indifferent, negligent, reticent, resigned, incompetent uh, in implementing correctly these secondary law obligations. Nonetheless, uh, these shortcomings regarding the correct implementation of these secondary law obligations fall beyond the transfer of a state resources and so um, uh, these shortcomings cannot be qualified as a state aid for the purposes of Article 107. Okay, thank you. Um, now, does the fact for state authorities to grant for free allowances uh, on the carbon market, for example, uh, amounts to a transfer of state resources? Well, the gratuitous allocation um, forms an advantage uh, for the holders uh, of the allowances as the state refrains itself from auctioning uh, the allowances and as a result denies itself the revenues. So the, the allowances have been qualified by the European Commission uh, as intangible assets uh, due to the fact that they are tradable uh, in the course of the uh, trading period and the carbon uh, market uh, scheme. Uh, and so they can be purchased, they can be uh, placed on market and so on and so forth. Uh, 
And so the fact that there is a market uh, for the allowances is a sufficient criterion to demonstrate uh, the value of the assets. The third condition uh, concerns selectivity. It is set out in Article 107 from the TFEU. That provision requires that the measure at issue is actually favoring either corporations uh, or production. Um, now, to which extent are environmental arrangements uh, likely to be selective? Well, the more the aid is significant, the more it is likely that it will distort competition. So, accordingly, the European Commission or competitors uh, have to demonstrate that the domestic measure uh, is favouring either a certain product or a certain category of undertakings. That condition is fulfilled when the beneficiary is identified, is singled out by its name, so the state aid is granted to company X or company Y or company Z, or whenever uh, the advantage is conferred upon a specific category of undertakings. In that connection, uh, Adria Vin pipeline case uh, is, in a ca is a case in point. Uh, in that case, the Court of Justice had to address uh, tax exemption granted by the Austrian authorities to the undertakings producing goods, uh, whereas the undertakings producing services were uh, obliged uh, to pay the CO2 tax. And the Court of Justice took the view that uh, such a tax arrangement uh, was uh, uh, fulfilling the selectivity uh, criterion. And what about uh, the general measures of economic policies? They do escape uh, the scope of ambit of Article 107. So whenever general measures of economic policies do not favour a certain production or a certain undertaking, uh, but they apply to all undertakings uh, without any distinction whatsoever, mm -hmm. they fall outside the scope of ambit of the state aid regime. Needless to say, uh, these measures must be justified by the nature of the structure uh, of the system. So, accordingly, uh, whenever uh, distinctions uh, carved out by the lawmaker uh, tend to uh, increase the discretion of the state authorities and in exercising their powers the state authorities do favour a certain product or do favour a certain undertaking, uh, the criterion of selectivity is likely to be fulfilled. Okay, thank you. Um, now, uh, concerning the last condition, uh, reading the provision in, provision in Article 107 from the TFAU, uh, I imagine not every measure is qualified as state aid. Um, what about the negative impact on competition, for example? The fourth condition requires that the domestic measure does not impair uh, trade uh, in goods between member states. Mm -hmm. uh, that condition is easily fulfill whenever the three first conditions I commented upon are already fulfilled. So, be it the European Commission, be it the General Court, be it the Court of Justice, uh, these institutions uh, are uh, usually taking the view that these four conditions uh, is fulfilled whenever uh, the uh, criterion regarding the selectivity um, has been fulfilled, you know. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. We'll address the exemptions in the next one. Looking forward to seeing you.